My name is Betty Abba. I'm the founder and executive director of the Center for Children's Health Education, Orientation and Protection, uh, which is also known as CIHO. I'm a journalist, I'm a poet, and I'm a, I'm a human rights activist uh, with specific um, specialization in children and women's rights. said that this is not the best of time to be born in Nigeria because um, of the state of um, children's rights, the lack of protection, adequate protection for children, especially vulnerable children in marginalized communities, poor and impoverished um, communities across the country, those who have no voice, those uh, who are most likely to be excluded and forgotten by government and majority of the society. Uh, we've had a, a situation where sexual violence against children, for instance, is on a steady rise and not seen, um, not much has been done by way of stemming the tide, by way of um, deterring potential culprits, by way of punishing adequately those who have been found guilty of violating the rights of children, of abusing children sexually. Uh, there have been other cases of uh, violence against children, physical abuse, negligence by government and other persons who are in a position to protect uh, children because they are the most vulnerable link in the society. And if there is anything that we can do as a nation is to ensure the protection, the adequate protection of children because they are the future. We can all, all only look up to a future that is filled with hope if we are able to protect, to nurture, to develop and prop up the children uh, of today. But not so much has been done in that direction and it's quite saddening. So I would say that it's not the very best of time to be born as um, a child in Nigeria. Because in societies and countries that take themselves seriously, they make the rights, the protection of children a major priority. Because any nation that cannot protect children that is not empath that also have empathy towards the plight of children, especially at risk children, um, is not supposed to be taken seriously. And so uh, Nigeria needs to sit up more and to show the rest of the world that it's a child friendly country. And from my experience, from my daily realities, I don't think that Nigeria right now is a child friendly country and it's quite sad, sad for me. I think that um, the major reason why uh, children are so much at risk in the Nigeria. Uh, the major reason why uh, it calls for concern the fact that children are not adequately protected and this trend seems to be on a steady rise is the fact that government has not put its foot down. As an activist, for instance, I can only shout and shout and scream about the rights of children being violated, about specific instances, bringing up it up to public knowledge. That it's government that has the authority to punish offenders. So when government has not put its feet down, when government has not shown seriousness by way of punishing offenders and putting them for public disgrace, for public shaming, I think that uh, there is not much of a deterrence. And then more and more potential corporate, more and more uh, potential harmers, people who harm children, will keep uh, the system will keep propping them up if we've not had enough deterrence, if those who have uh, violated the rights of children have not been punished and publicly shamed. So I, I think that the justice system is weak. There is no willingness, there is no sincerity on the part of um, policy makers, on the part of law enforcement agents to uphold the rights of children and to punish offenders adequ adequately. And so it's one of the reasons um, why this continues. It's one of the reasons why the violation of children's rights continue to be a reoccurring decima in Nigeria. I think, first of all, that government has to show us that it's really serious about protecting the rights of children. The, the, the policy makers, the law enforcement agents. And it will interest you to know that Nigeria is the signatory to most of the laws and policies uh, on the international landscape. A United Nations uh, law on children's rights. Nigeria uh, has a child's rights act since 2003. And um, 
though if a number of states have um, us uh, have also come up to implement it, their own versions of the Child Rights Act. For, for instance, Lagos State has its own version of 2007, the Child Rights Act of, of Lagos State 2007. But the problem is with the implementation. If government would implement these laws, for instance, I keep referring to child sexual abuse. Someone has been has been found guilty of sexually molesting, sexually abusing a child. If that person is sent to jail, there's uh, ranging from 14 years to life imprisonment. Imprisonment. Well, in the in, in the history of Nigeria, we've not had up to 100 conviction of rape cases, for instance. And so, and and, and 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 we have hundreds of cases of rape cases every single month. And over 50 years, we've not had or more, we've not had conviction that is up to 100. So how are we going to be taken seriously? How are we not going to have this reoccurrence every single day? So government has to work with stakeholders, the NGO, the international communities, uh, community leaders, youth leaders, and other stakeholders to ensure that this thing is stepped down because government does not live in isolation. You don't make law and then go to sleep. You make law and ensure that they are implemented, that, that they are enforced to every single bit, every single detail, every single letter of the law. And so, um, but we've not seen so, so much of that. What we've seen so much is that of tokenism. There's so much talk, so that will look good in the eyes of the world, but in reality, we've not um, really had um, a, a real serious talk, real serious uh, policy implementation with regards to the protection of, of the rights of children. There, there are some things that happen, for instance, some cases. For instance, a man put his own son for um, two weeks in detention within his own house because he believes the, the, the boy is a witch or the boy eat, ate meat from the pot and then put the boy in a chain and and this is actually this actually happened and you will expect that government there will be a special statement from government a special reaction because this is the a gross violation of the rights of children or a school for instance uh, a school head for instance calling all the girls in school and then carrying out a so-called virginity test on the girl you will expect a swift reaction from government. It's actually prosecuting and sending that kind of character to jail. You will see some people actually killing children in the name of um, branding them witches. And you will expect that the government will ensure that that prosecution is made a public spectacle so that other potential corporates will not come up. They'll just see and there'll be a complete deterrence. But we've not had so much of that. We, for and almost every single week, we have cases of rape coming up, and then rather than us as an NGO, as um, a civil society organization, as activists fighting with the corporates, we are entangled in battle with the law enforcement agents because they want to come in between. Last year, for instance, we had uh, up to three or four cases of rape in which we, we we were entangled in a sort, a sort of warfare with the police because the police came in between because of course with the the reality of high level of corruption in the nigerian police when a case comes up the the the, 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 the interest of the policeman uh, on the case is not even to ensure that justice is meted out to the victim it's how much can i get out of this case it's so embarrassing it's scandalous that that's just the reality and that is my reality because this is what I encounter from time to time. And you see a police officer trying to get bribed and trying to free the culprit. So many, about two, two cases, for instance, of um, rape involving uh, if, uh, an eight year old boy earlier last year, and sometimes in November, November 16th, specifically, a girl that was gang raped by four boys. In two of those instances, we had to drag the case to social media and to traditional media before the case was recalled back because in each of those instances, the culprit, the suspect, were freed without being tried. The police did not ensure that those cases were taken to court and to ensure that those people were prosecuted. They were just freed, obviously, because they had been bribed by the parents of the suspects. 
And so where there is corruption, where there is so much interference from the law enforcement agents, the same persons who are who have been um, given the, the responsibility, who have the responsibility, the constitutional responsibility to protect these most vulnerable members of the society, they are compromised and they are they're, they're dancing to the tunes of of the suspect of the criminals. In such an instance, you can see that the lives of the most vulnerable will continue to be endangered. Their vulnerability is taken to another scale completely. And then for some of us that work with children in marginalized communities where the parents are poor, and of course in Nigeria, like most uh, societies, most countries in the world, when you are poor, you are voiceless. And so it's even worse. It's even, the situation is even much worse. When people's rights are violated, they just let go because they know that they are not going to get anywhere, especially if the corporates, if the suspects have more superior financial power. And so these are some of the challenges um, we see. We want a justice system that is more serious. We want a law enforcement um, system that is corruption free and that uh, actually uh, sets out to correct injustice in the society, that sets out to ensure that people are protected, especially uh, the uh, demography that we work with, uh, children, the most vulnerable link in the society. Okay, in our organization, uh, with regards to child sexual abuse, we have what we call the Rise Against Rape um, Abuse, which is RARA. In Yoruba, it means no. And so, RARA, in RARA, we go to, to schools, especially to in schools in poor neighborhoods, uh, schools in marginalized communities, to sensitize children, especially young, vulnerable girls, teenagers in particular, um, on how to... Um, avoid how to prevent uh, sexual abuse and how to report uh, potential um, abusers and that has helped a lot and apart from that um, we take up cases with the police and try to take them up all the way to the court uh, it's it's quite um, hectic it's quite uh, challenging especially because of what i've uh, discussed the the, the the difficulties we face we try to get through the module of or a corruption redo, redo the uh, police force, which are the first point of contact when you have cases like that. And um, so those are some of uh, the things we do in terms of uh, intervention. And um, the, the, apart from child sexual abuse, there are other cases of child abuse. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we had a, a very serious case some years ago, a school right here in Lagos, where the, 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 the school owner, turned the school to more like a military garrison where children were being tortured for the slightest um, offenses. And there was a particular case that was reported to us. She had, uh, the, 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 the girl in question, it, it, the nine-year-old girl, had cheated in a, in a test. And so the lady asked that she be waterboarded. And you know, when you talk about waterboarding, uh, that will remind you of uh, what happened in Iraq where American soldiers waterboarded Iraqi civilians. She had the girl, she asked the teacher to get the girl and had her turned upside down with her head and she asked that the girl's head be ducked in water. So you have a girl turned upside down and then she was ducked in a bucket of water. And so that got to us. We got involved, called in the state agency and that school was put under um, supervision for some time and of course we called in the media because one of the things we do is to ensure that we put some of these things out in the media to ensure that the case is not lost, to ensure that no one is intimidated. We put it in public, um, in, in the public bonus, in this public um, spotlight. And so that was a major case that we dealt with. If I had my way, that school should, should have been shut down. Because apart from that particular case, there were other cases where the owner of the school had tortured children and some the parents had to withdraw their children from the school and all of that. So that was one of the things we do by trying to uh, stand up to people who uh, physically abuse children, who sexually abuse children, and to ensure that the law takes its course. Because people should not just get away with that kind of um, crime, especially against the most vulnerable. So there are a number of other things uh, we do. But, uh, child sexual abuse, physical abuse, which are some of the most um,
common uh, or prevalent crimes around. These are some of the things uh, that we'll work with.